the kind of conversion we are looking forward to embrace within this period. And there will be salvation. Once you are converted, you are saved. There must be practical submission to the divine will. When you are converted, that is the only way you now submit to the divine will. Tomorrow we are going to treat, or day after tomorrow, about prayer and the will of God. You know, if you are not converted, you will not understand God. You will really misunderstand God. But when you are converted in the heart, you will understand that everything works unto good to those who love God. So when you pray, when you have prayed, and everything is not turning out as you expected, you will still believe that God still exists. You will still believe that God is still alive. You will still believe that everything depends on Him. And you will still have life and have it in abundance. Amen. This word, I think, is very rich. We cannot throw it away. I want to tell you something about a woman by name, St. Teresa of Avila. She is one of my friends. I love her so much. Herself and then John of the Cross. They are spiritual masters. I love them. You know, this young woman was so much inspired and possessed by God. After her encounter, she said at the beginning of my spiritual life, there was an encounter that made her to say, at the beginning of my spiritual life, she had been a Christian before this point of encounter. And after the encounter, she refers to that point as at the beginning of her spiritual life. And she started living a holy life, a good life, a quality life. And one day, actually, she suffered because of Christ. And one day, she had to say, Jesus, why are you allowing me to be suffering like this? And Jesus said, oh, that is what, how I, re I relate to my friends. And she said, that is why you have very few of them. You know, when you love Jesus, it's true you might be suffering. But I want to tell you, everything works unto good to those who love God. If you will be patient, if you will be confident and remain in God while you are praying, because sometimes what is happening to us may not be the will of God, but because of the permissive will of God, we will accept that and the devil will give it to us, give it to us, and we will think it is the will of God and we will be dying. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I went to a family to pray for them. And I discovered that, that they were in chains. There were about five young men there. And they were all chained together. With their hands at their backs. How could someone achieve something. When he or she is under bondage. This chain was not from God. So if someone accepts that kind of chain. The person will keep being in a perpetual slavery. This is not the kind of God's will I'm talking about. It is when you have encountered Christ and you are praying, you believe in him, you walk with him, then whatever you see, you will accept it as the will of God because you are now living in a new life. One whose sins has been forgiven and now he is living with Christ because he had got a true repentance and a true conversion and now he is in Christ. And that is why St. Paul said, even while he was suffering, after his conversion, because Jesus told Ananias, don't worry, when Ananias was complaining, that this young man has been killing people, Jesus said, you will see how he will suffer for the sake of the gospel. And when St. Paul started suffering, he could say in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, he said, oh, I count all things as rot." For having found Christ, I consider every other thing that would have been a profit as loss if only I will gain Christ. If only I will remain in Christ. Amen and amen. Even while he was still suffering. St. Augustine said, Ah, beauty, all oh, ancient and ever new. How late have I known you? Even when he was suffering, after his repentance, you know before his repentance, he was going about having clubs, going about perpetuating evil, 
and they will do evil, they will come and celebrate it. You will see someone, he said himself, he was saying it in the two cities. He said in his own confession, St. Augustine said, when he was in the world, he belonged to a man in Kenyan, a club, a kind of a cult, and they will do evil, they will come and celebrate it. And he was celebrating evil. And eventually, they were not suffering, nothing was going wrong. So he was so happy doing all kinds of things. Then when he got converted, temptation came around. And then there was a kind of problem. Devil never wanted him to stay. But in the midst of those problems, he was able to say, Oh beauty, so ancient and ever new. How late have I known you? I want to tell you, the highest thing God can do for you is to allow you to encounter him. You will see the beauty of God. You will see the glory of God. You will see. Can't you imagine what happened to St. Peter at that episode of the transfiguration? When Peter experienced the beauty of God, when Peter experienced the glory of God, Peter shouted, God, oh Lord, it is good that we do what? We remain here. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. It is good that to remain here. And that reminded us what the Bible said in, in Psalm 16 verse 11. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy and happiness forever. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you are passing through, once you have encountered Jesus, that will have a new shape. It will have a new look. Because happiness is the thing of the heart. Happiness is the thing of the mind. It's the thing of the spirit. It is within. If it is not within, then why would someone who was so rich commit suicide? Why would someone who was so established not happy? Many people are not happy. Even when they have material things. Because not, those things are not the things that could make you happy. Amen and amen. They will only assist. Amen and amen. So, God has forgiven you once you have reconciled to him. Then when you have been forgiven, remember, you must wear the cloak of full repentance and the true conversion. And once you are doing that, the grace of holiness will be your portion. A man repented and immediately he was put in prison. At the same time, the thieves invaded his house and shot the house to, the, to pieces. So when you repent and you start embracing crosses, don't worry. When you have repented and things are not going the way you have expected it, don't worry. Everything works unto good to those who love God. Someone was put in prison. At the same time, people invaded his house and got everything destroyed. Imagine what could have happened. Can you see the hand of God in everything that is happening around you when you have truly repented? And you keep on praying. And I want to tell you, assure you, that you will see the glory of God in the land of the living. And somebody say, Amen. We are talking about God's forgiveness. Another question is, can another person forgive? Can another person forgive? If you go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Catechism 1441, the Catechism stated, at the same time, by the virtue of his divine authority, he gives this power to men to exercise in his name. He gives this power of forgiveness. Only God can forgive sin. But he has given this power of forgiveness to who? To men. To do in his name. Amen and amen. Now, if you go to John chapter 20, turn to John chapter 20. Get your Bible. Please, I want us to be using our Bible. There is a book we will have eventually. One of my books. Or two of them. At the back of them, you see reading the Bible through the year. You can follow it and you read the Bible through the year. Remember what we said yesterday. Ignorance of the scripture 
is ignorance of Christ. When you know the scripture, you are empowered. You have courage because everything has been written. Amen and amen. So I want you to turn to your Bible, John chapter 20, verse, from verse 21 to 23. And then I would like someone to read from the floor among the congregations. Get microphone from the bandstand or choir stand. Give the microphone. I want someone to read so that we we'll also hear from someone what happened after the resurrection. I thought there is a microphone there. There is no more microphone there. Okay, is it a wired one? Someone who has Bible can go there and wire it to us. Chapter, Father. Read John 20, 21 to 23. As she reads, look into your Bible and see what we are saying. What happened after the resurrection? He said to them, Peace be with you. Okay? For want of time, I'm going. Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After this, he breathed unto them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Unto who? Unto who? The apostles, the apostles, he written unto them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you return anyone's sins, they are retained. Some people are finding it difficult to go to confession from the hands of a priest. First of all, he will ask God to forgive you. Then you go for sacramental confession. You go for sacramental confession. Saint Faustina talks about what happens in the tribunal of mercy, in the throne of mercy. When you come to the priest, you are not confessing to the priest. You are confessing to the person the priest represents. And that is why you say father. You are referring to the father in heaven you are confer confessing to. That is why a priest has no right to refuse to forgive you because you have not sinned against the priest. When you see someone who is hiding her sin or his sin in the confession, it's because you lack knowledge. There's nothing you will do, a priest will not listen to you because you have not even sinned against the priest. So the priest has right to listen to you. You have sinned against God. So the priest cannot accuse you of anything. The priest can only help you to, you know, adjust and then make a repentance. So don't be afraid when you approach your priest, begin to say, why would I tell him this or uh, tell him that? It doesn't matter. You have sinned to God, not to him. Amen and amen. So feel free to make your confession. What the priest does is to reintegrate you to the community. Why you should go and confess to the parish is that the priest needs to reintegrate you to the, into the community. Look at what happened in the Bible in Luke chapter 15 when the prodigal son sinned before he could come to the father the father ran and embraced him and through party he made a party conducted the party because he wanted to introduce and reintegrate this child again into the community to tell them that this guy was lost but now he's found he's one of us again and that was why he could eat with Zacchaeus he ate with Zacchaeus to tell them that this young man, he, ha he sinned, but now he's back to the community. Amen and amen. So the priest is forgiving you to introduce you into the community of the believers. That is what the priest does. If you go to Luke chapter 5, you will see also what happened to the, to the lepers. When they were healed, Jesus told them, go and see the priest. Even in Matthew chapter 8, even in Luke chapter 1, when the lepers were healed, Jesus told them, go and see the priest. Why? So that they will be reintegrated again into the community of believers. When you are a leper, you are kind of ostracized from the community. That is exactly what sin does. When you 
involved in sin, especially mortal sin, it will alienate you. It will make you a foreigner. You are no longer in the Christian fold. You have removed yourself automatically from the children of God. So you need to integrate yourself again. That is why it is dangerous when you see people who do not fear mortal sin. I want to tell you the truth. Fear mortal sin as you fear snake. Because as leprosy destroys the flesh, so is mortal sin destroying the spirit, the soul. So it does to the soul. I want to tell you the truth. Run away from mortal sin. These days, people do not fear sin. They enter into fornication, adultery. They don't want even homosexualism. When you forget that Christ has paid your price, that you are a child of God by grace, and you do not get this grace, you are wasting time. Do not, because of somebody, you need to live a life that will destroy your, your relationship with God. Always fight to be on the side of God. From experience, let me tell you something. When you allow yourself to involve in immoral and the more, mortal sins, you alienate yourself from Jesus who has saved you. At that point, if anybody is monitoring you, because la just last week, I was praying for somebody and the Spirit of God said I should warn her because she is under monitoring. And then she, she, they are just waiting for her to fall into mortal sin. They will kill her. Many people are dying and you think it is their time, that they are timely. Many people have died untimely because they are living a careless life. And they will study the person in the spiritual, in the spirit world, and they will know that this person is no longer with God. That is the only one someone can kill you. If you are living in God and God is in you, no one can touch you. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Because your life is hidden in God. And God in Christ. is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. It will be difficult for you to be caught. But when you start living, so when you find yourself in a mother sin, immediately repent. Go look for a priest and have your sins confessed. You have not sinned against any priest. You have sinned against God. And God is ever ready to accept you. You are the one who is denying yourself of God's forgiveness under the guise of anything. So today, I want to tell you to come back to Christ because through the priest, because the priest is another Christ who has received the authority to forgive. Amen and amen. amen. I didn't hear. Amen and amen. amen. Another aspect and the last aspect of forgiveness is when you have been forgiven, forgive others. When you have been forgiven, forgive others others. Talk to your neighbor. 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 When you are forgiving, forgive others. You see, many times we, 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 we just do as if we are little kids. You give them something and you ask them to give, give you back. They will do like this. Or they will give you small. Look at episode of Matthew chapter 18. From verse 21 to 35. You understand that Jesus told a story. About a young man. Who was forgiven. He was forgiven how many thousand talents. How many thousand talents? 10,000 talents. He was owing and he was forgiven that. And this young man who was forgiven went outside and saw someone who was owing him a hundred denarii. A hundred denarii. And refused to forgive the person. And the person was begging, give me time. He refused. Do you know how many denarii makes a talent? 6,000 denarii makes a talent. But this man was forgiven 10,000 talents. 
I don't know whether you are having the picture of what I'm saying. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Look at the gap. The margin is too much. And this young man refused to forgive. This young man insisted that this man must pay him. If not, if not, you see, many times God has forgiven us. It takes a humble soul to understand how much he has been forgiven. Do you know that just a mortal sin is enough for you to go to hell? And you think it's just, a, it's just one. One. It's enough for you to go to hell. And God has forgiven you. Many. Many. But someone did something against you and you say, I will never forgive. Someone was having problem with his neighbor. And people came to settle them. To settle for them. And then this young man said, it will never be settled. It will only be in heaven. That our settlement will be in heaven. I want to tell you the truth. If you do not forgive, you are not going to be forgiven. Jesus Christ ended that story in Matthew chapter 18, verse 35. He said, this is how your heavenly father will treat you. If you do not from your heart forgive one who has offended you. A woman was offended by a man. And the woman went to the church and wrote a petition to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, Blessed Sacrament chapter. Do you know what she wrote? God, punish this man. Kill him. Kill his children. And kill his great-grandchildren. This is what the woman wrote. Imagine someone did something to her the person didn't kill her and she wanted God to kill and kill even those who did nothing to her unfortunately a priest came to arrange the chapel and saw a write up perused through it and unfortunately the woman wrote her name there after everything and this is a woman who was so religious so pious in our own description. I want to tell you, if you have not learned to forgive, you are not yet a good Christian. Today, we must believe that God has forgiven us. And we must be quick to forgive. We must be ready to forgive no matter what somebody has done to us. Once something happened to a priest, a priest was dealt with by his parishioners and said all kinds of atrocities against his name. After that, this priest went to the monastery to pray against all those who accused him wrongly. And he, he decided that he will use stations of the cross to ask God to deal with them, to kill them, to punish them. And as he was doing the stations of the cross, he was doing the station one, two, three, and kept moving. At the twelfth station, at the twelfth station, what happened at the twelfth station? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus Christ, this is a person. He is reporting to to punish those who did not kill him but they said something against him but this, this this is the one who forgive those who killed him i want to tell you that brothers and sisters you must be ready to forgive so that you'll be forgiven remember when you pray you say forgive us when, especially when you say our father forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Are you sure you have forgiven those who trespassed? Are you sure? Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 you are praying against yourself. We must forgive. You must be ready to forgive. Something happened in Germany. There was this woman who gave a talk in Ravensbrück. After giving a talk on reconciliation and forgiveness she was applauded. 
So people were giving him, giving her handshake. And then one man came up and was approaching. And this lady looked at the man. It was the man that was standing there during the Nazi concentration camp. This person stood there at a guard. This guard was watching them. If, if, even when they, are, they were naked, even they were sleeping, everything. And there, she lost her only brother and her mother in the Nazi concentration camp. And this is the guard who is coming up after the war to give her a handshake. And immediately, the guard brought out his hand and he, she looked and saw, wow, she could not. But she gave talk on reconciliation and forgiveness. It is very difficult. It is very difficult to forgive. But remember that you have been forgiven more. You have been forgiven more. You must forgive. And then she started crying. She cried and cried. And said, God, give me grace. God, give me grace. She was praying in her heart and was asking for grace. And eventually the tears came down from her eyes. And she was crying. She was crying. And she extended her hand. Oh God. I want to tell you, when you remember that somebody has accused you, has misrepresented you. Oh. Oh. I've made you feel so bad. Oh, the tendency to say, to say no, I won't forgive you is there. I remember what happened to Saint Joseph. That is Joseph, the child of uh, Jacob. What, what happened in Egypt when the brothers came to see him? They didn't know it was Joseph. They saw Joseph, and Joseph went inside and cried. Eventually, when Joseph came to them, they were complaining. They were kind of being reproached. And Joseph said to them, Do not reproach yourselves. God brought me here to save your life. They could not believe that Joseph could be saying this. And in Genesis chapter 45, verse 5, Joseph said that. In verse 7, he repeated that. In verse 8, he said, do not reproach yourself. It was not you who brought me here. It was God. He brought me here, made me father to Pharaoh, made me chief of all his household, and made me ruler of all Egypt. I want to tell you, when someone is doing evil to you, and you have prayed, and that could not be averted, don't worry. God knows about it. If you're a good Christian and you believe in Christ, everything works unto good to those who love him. You may not know it, but it's true. Somebody may be thinking that he's doing evil to you without knowing that he's taking you to another place where you'll be blessed. Maybe somebody concord something, made something, made something up and placed upon your head to make sure that you are expelled or ejected from a particular place. Don't worry. Someone was free. How do I put it now? The person didn't do anything. He didn't know about what happened. And somebody came and said it. the person was, she was bringing behind everything, accused her, and said every other thing against her. And she was ejected from the office. After two days, thieves came to that office and shot every other person in that office. The person left in anger and tears. But when she heard what happened, what will she do now? What will she do now? A young girl was a sales lady to someone. And that was person was desiring evil. The man she was helping desired her wrongly because they are not in marriage. And then the young man, the, 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 the young girl said, no, that I love Christ and for the sake of Christ, I won't do anything evil, immoral. So the, young, the, the, the man said, 
I'm done with you. Go, leave this office. As a sales girl. And the girl left. Because she was a kind of jobless, somebody saw her and said, ah, this time you've been hanging around. I am doing visa rotary. American rotary. Do you, are you interested? She said, ah, if you feel you want to accommodate me, you are free because I don't know anything about it. And then her name was put there. She didn't contribute to anything. And at the end of the day, what happened? The young woman was giving visa. Not that just that she was giving visa. She was so opportune to be, you know, living with people, you know, people who have made it. She was so situated and she became, within two years, she was so settled. And then, better than where she was. I want to tell you something. Forgive. Don't worry. When David was being pursued by Saul, Saul pursued him in 1 Samuel chapter 23. Saul came to the, to, to the desert, was waiting for David to kill David, and he could not see David. He could not see David. When he eventually fell asleep, David went and took the border of his, his cloak, and eventually said to Saul, when Saul started going, David came out and said, Saul, look at the border of your cloak. I'm having it here. I have the opportunity to kill you. But let God judge between you and me. Let God judge. And what did Saul say at the end of the, end of the day? In 1 Samuel chapter 24, from verse 20, David said, Oh Saul, oh Saul, you are more righteous than myself. You are more righteous. Who will have opportunity to kill his enemy? I will not do that. Oh, I know. He started praising Saul. David, I know you will eventually reign over the people of Israel. And I know God will surely bless you. I want to tell you that forgiveness is the highest miracle that happened in, in life. Why Jesus was dying, he forgave those who offended him. And he said, you must forgive. If you do not forgive, you are not going to forgive him. They are not going to be forgiven. Many of us here are harboring unforgiveness. Many of us here and I want to tell you, if you die with that spirit, you are going to hell. If you die with the spirit of unforgiveness, you are going to hell. Job, before Job could be blessed, God asked him to forgive all who offended him. Is it not true? In Job chapter 10, from verse 42, God asked Job, before he was blessed, forgive all. All his friends who asked him to Talk against God. To renounce God. And at the end of the day, God said, forgive them. It was when Job forgave them that Job was blessed. You must forgive. You must forgive. God pardons those who pardon others. Ecclesiastes chapter 27, verse 33. And verse 28 from verse 1 to 9. If you forgive, you'll be forgiven. In Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the merciful, for they shall do what? For they shall do what? Child of God, I know someone has offended you. Stand up. Stand up wherever you are. Stand up wherever you are. How many times do we forgive? How many times will someone offend you and you will forgive? I know someone has offended you and now you are remembering that person. I want you to take a minute to say, I forgive. Look into your head. Call the name of that person. Please, I want you to experience miracle between now and Friday. I want you to experience mega oceanic blessing between now and Friday. The condition is to say, I ah, have forgiven. It's not easy. Especially when you have acquired maybe properties or, or money or wealth through hard aimed means. And after all suffering, someone just like that in a flash took it away from you. You are preparing to go to a date to report. You are preparing to do something but God is saying, 
my child, forgive. And he will see me at work. I want you to call that person or those persons and say, I am forgiven. It is difficult, but I want you to do it. Because you cannot escape this God's blessing that is hovering around the corner here. You must experience the beauty of God, the blessing of God within this period. You must say, I have forgiven. Examine yourself. I know if you are holding any resentment, whether real or imagined, imagery, whether real or imagery, if you are holding any resentment, no matter how small, please, hey, oh, this person has provoked you. Oh, oh. She lacks gratitude. She never appreciated all you did. He never appreciated. She used, used sharp words against you. Oh, all your struggles, all you labored for, she took away, he took away. Oh, oh, this person that raped you. Oh, this person that misrepresented you. Oh, this person that dealt with you. A Spanish author has posed the problem in these terms. Is it not customary that the sick be treated with more affection than the healthy? Be then the doctor to your enemies. The good you do to them, we may enkindle what thoughts of love. What the thought of love? I want you to think about those who have offended you and then say to the Lord, I have forgiven. I have forgiven. It's not easy, but say it. I want you to say it. Jesus is here. Say, I have forgiven in my heart. Say that you have forgiven. You will see the miracle. The miracle will not happen unless you forgive. Unforgiveness is like a shame. Once you hold on to it, oh, there are numerous number of blessings you cannot get to. Once you hold on to unforgiveness, ah, it's like a shame that is tying someone maybe from this altar and you are under this hold. You cannot get your blessing that is over there. You want to get your blessing. You want to get a life partner. You want to get a blessing. You want to get wealth. You want to achieve this contract. You want to get this. Oh, oh, something is holding you. That thing is unforgiving spirit. That thing is holding you. Ah, it does not, it will not allow you. And it will never allow you until you cut off. You have to break the hold so that you get your blessing. With this kind of hold, you cannot get your blessing. I want you to forgive. You must forgive. God says, forgive and you'll be forgiven. If you do not forgive, then you will not receive forgiveness. Remember that whatever someone does, we, and God allows that, it will be a, a stone throw or a springboard to your, another blessing of yours. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 15, Apostle Paul took this term seriously. See that none of you repairs evil for evil, but always seek to do good to another and forgive one another. In Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, bear with one another and forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. All kinds of grievances. When it is difficult, say with Christ, Luke 23, 34. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Even when the person knows what he or she is doing, you got to forgive. You got to let go. If you let go, you will let God. If you let go, you will let God. Do not do as others are doing. The Bible says, do not model your life according to the contemporary. Let the renewal of your spirit transform you. Do not do as others are doing. An eye for an eye. It was, there's something Mahatma Gandhi said. An eye for an eye only ends, ends up making blind. Do me, I do you. Don't believe what the word is saying. Believe what Jesus is saying. Remember that we do not know God. We know God only through Jesus. He's one who tells us what God wants. God wants you to forgive. He wants you to forgive. 
we got to be like Jesus. It is expensive. But Jesus Christ did the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle was not healing of the man before the pool of Bethsaida. The greatest miracle was not healing those lepers. The greatest miracle was not walking on top of the waters. The greatest miracle was not changing bread to one to changing uh, uh, multiplying bread. The greatest miracle was not any other thing. The greatest miracle was that Christ was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That is the greatest miracle. The one who was killed, who was under suffering and pains could say, forgive them. Can you key in and say with Jesus, forgive? Remember that when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, when he saw Mary Mandarin, he said, go and tell Peter and others. He forgave Peter who sold him, who denied him. He was ready to forgive Judah, Judas if he was alive. Remember Jesus forgave. You must forgive. The biggest power and the greatest gift we can offer is forgiveness. It's forgiveness. And you must do it. In this lengthy period and retreat, if you do not forgive, you will not have an encounter. If you do not forgive, you will not see your miracle. The miracle is flowing. The miracle is everywhere. It's just if you are ready to forgive and you will key in. The highest miracle is that Jesus forgave and he is here ready to do. If you do the same, you will see the power of God. Can we take our phone after today and send text to that person, to that your brother, to that your sister? Oh, my brother, how are you? You will cry. It will pain you. This person dealt with you. And you say, I will never call you again in life. I will never speak to you. Can you pick up your phone and say to your sister, how are you? Text the person. If you cannot call the person, if you cannot muster courage to call, can you pick your phone and text? My brother, how are you doing? I'm praying for you. That person that did a lot to you, that sinned against you, that did all kinds of calumny against your name. Oh, that cannot stand again among your people to say something. And you are saying to him, how are you? May God bless you. And you do that. I want to tell you, if you do that, oh, you will receive money. If you do that, you will receive breakthrough. If you do that, you will receive grace. If you do that, oh, the sky will be your bed. If you do that, oh, you will see the power of God in this period of Lent. And I want to tell you, whatever you're asking God, you will receive. Whatever you're demanding from God, you will receive. God is here. He just wants you to forgive. He has forgiven you. And he's just saying, my child, my child, just obey me and you will see the power of God.